Hi again, it's Charlene Gross, Assistant Professor of Costume Design at Penn State School of Theater. Today, for stage makeup class, we're going to talk about latex prosthetic, also known as appliances. Today, we're going to work on a flat surface so you don't have to worry about it sliding off. We are going to think about how large we want it, we're going to look at our arm and measure to see how big we'd like it, and we're going to draw it out on a piece of paper. So here I have a piece of paper, and I decided I wanted about two inches open gash to be so I'm gonna draw a line that's four inches long because that four inches is gonna be the total size of my prosthetic the two inches is how big that actual gash is what that does is give us some extra edge around that shaped gash to apply the latex to our skin and I'm drawing the shape and I'm roughing it out I'm basing the shape on my research because we're always going to start from a piece of research of a real wound and I'm drawing the inside of the gash and then that outside of the gash. Next, I'm going to cover my piece of paper of my shape with a piece of plastic. I'm just cutting apart a piece of Ziploc bag and I'm going to take that Ziploc bag and cover my drawing. I'm going to smooth it out over my drawing and then pin each of those four corners with some push pins into my table. I'm sorry there's a lot of glare here. That's unfortunate. Next, I'm going to grab one of my to-go cup containers, which is awesome to use for liquid latex because these little guys are just enough to pour some of our liquid latex, and I'm using Krylon from our kit. I'm going to pour it into my cup, and it's great because I can pour out exactly what I need for my project into my one little cup, cap my Krylon latex so it stays nice and fresh, let that smell off gas a little bit in that cup, and that cup is now big enough for me to use one of my makeup wedges in. So I want to use a disposable makeup wedge because after we're done with this, we're going to toss it. And what I'm doing is pouring the base of the liquid latex over my shape, and I'm using that wedge to nudge the latex where I want to go. Don't worry if it's not exactly the right shape. We can always trim it once it's dry, and as it dries, we can always finesse it. Oh right, cap your latex, because the other thing is great, if you knock over this latex, then you don't have to worry about too much spilling. Now you're gonna think about what you wanna use for your appliance, either toilet paper or a cotton ball. Um, if you're gonna put objects into it, you wanna have those out ahead of time. For this one, I'm gonna use cotton. And I have a cotton pad, and I'm gonna pull it apart, and I'm gonna tease that cotton out of it, because cotton's really good to roll into a shape between your hands because you can tease those fibers out exactly what you want, roll it up, and make like a little bit of a snake. It's like making snakes with clay in your kid. And you can get those nice little edges at the corners and you can always change and manipulate that shape a little bit. So I'm finessing the edges, I'm laying it into my latex, which is a little tacky, and using my plastic tongue dispressor for my kit. I'm rolling the other side finessing those edges, teasing them out so they come to points because it's going to make the skin look like it's gash and that's where it's going to close on either end. Grabbing the tongue depressor, shaping it in because the longer I can go without getting latex on my hands, the better because you're going to get latex on your hands. So I've switched to that uh, wood one so you can see it a little bit. And I'm just nudging that cotton in at the end so it touches together. You're going to let it dry a little bit and then pour another layer of latex on to coat that cotton. Oh, and always clean as you go, right? We wanna make sure we're clean as we go so nothing gets spilled and into that latex. And I'm letting it dry again, letting it dry, I'm cleaning it up, I'm putting all my other objects away that I don't need anymore. Now it's drying, drying, drying. Give it lots of time. Don't use your hair dryer to dry it yet. Make sure it has a good base before you do that. And I'm gonna come back to it. And I am checking those edges. I'm rolling out a little bit of that extra latex that has leaked over to the side. You notice I'm using my finger to hold it down and pull the other pieces away to keep the shape I want. And now, as I crumble those pieces off to the side, I'm gonna see if any of those pieces are usable to lay in before I do my next layer. Take my lid off and I'm gonna pour out what I have left. 
to create a nice layer over top, taking that latex piece to help create a little bit of a better tail, if you will, for my gash. Get my sleeve out of my way, refilling my cup, cleaning off the lid of my latex so when I go to get it later, it doesn't stick on me. I'm just using my finger to clean around the rim of that latex and then screw that cap on nice and tight. Then clean your fingers off afterwards by rubbing your hands together and rolling those pieces off. And again, I'm using those pieces to put into my prosthetic to give it texture, some little skin irregularities. And I'm going back now that it's gotten a little tacky and trying to form those edges with my popsicle stick. Be better if I just grab a paper towel and clean up some of those edges. So you can see that one edge wants to move, which means it's drying nicely. And just stop playing with it and let this appliance dry on its own. So a day has gone by and we've let our prosthetic dry and it looks great. So we have our prosthetic. And you can see I started to work up some of my edges and I'm gonna pull it off my piece of plastic. And if you find that any of your edges are too thin, you can roll those up and trim them away. So I'll probably take a pair of scissors and trim this piece away. And I'm gonna do that so you can see it upright. These little edges, if they get too thin, you can just take a pair of scissors and trim to the shape you want it. And like we mentioned earlier, you wanna leave a little bit of the edge and you can see my buildup in the middle, that gash. Can you see those dimension there? We have a gash in the middle, but we're leaving this like little flange of extra latex around because when we go to put that on our skin, you want a little extra edge to apply. I'm gonna cut it down. It's nice and smooth and it dries to this lovely yellow color. My jewelry out of my way. I'm gonna apply it to the inside of my arm to give my face a little bit of a break. And wherever you apply it, you wanna make sure you have no hair. If this part of your arm is, has hair on it, you might wanna take a little razor and get rid of that hair. If you're gonna do it on the back side where we all have a little more hair, definitely shave some of that hair off. Your Cryoline kit comes with these little tubes, a hydromastic, which is a spirit gum that is water-based, just enough for you to get the hang of it. Another brand you can use is Prosade. I actually prefer using this when I'm working professionally. It's a medical grade adhesive, sticks very, very well. Depending on how long you want it, you can apply your adhesive to the back of your prosthetic. If it's gonna be on a long, a long time, you can apply it to both places. I'm going to apply it to the back of my prosthetic. So this pops out. You have this little top. I'm gonna to put a little bit of my hydromastic on the end of that. So I'm just rubbing this along the back of my prosthetic piece and I'm making sure it gets all the way out to the edge. You don't have to use very much. I'm gonna put that down for a moment. I am going to cap my mastic. And you're gonna hear that double click, click, click. I'm gonna wait for this to get a little tacky. Remember where we chose to put it and we did a measurement. I'm gonna go this way to avoid the hairs on my arm this time. Usually use two fingers to hold it in place. If you have a couple of those edges that are lifting up, I'm gonna let the middle adhere and then I'm gonna get a little more of my hydromastic out and get my edges a little smoother. The other thing you can do, I can trim this bigger section away or I can get it down nice and sticky. If you notice, I didn't make this 
extremely smooth because I want it to have a more natural edge. You see this hard edge there? I don't particularly want a 90 degree angle or anything close to it. So I trimmed my piece. It's getting nice and tacky. But those edges are pretty good. I'm gonna go and get one and cap it gently. Get a little bit of that mastic underneath there. And get a little bit just on a couple edges that are lifting up. And I'm gonna use my fingers to hold it in place. And it does not take very long to stick. So we're gonna give it a little bit of time. Go back to your original research to see where the redness falls. And we'll also talk about how to help hide some of these edges of your appliance piece. So you can use those further edges as a secondary inflammation. So where your skin's gotten irritated and it's come back up. So I'm gonna grab my foundation colors. I'm going to grab a sponge, blend, blend that out. And I'm not trying to get into all those crevices. I'm letting some of the prosthetic piece come through. So what I can do is go in and lay in some highlights. I'm gonna grab my palette, grab my translucent blood, Use the blood you made, see how it feels. This is my foundation color down here. I'm gonna actually blend a slightly darker color. Might even come back to this one in a moment. And I've charged up my brush and made it flat. Because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give this piece some shadows right off the bat. And I'm gonna come back and use some Misty Violet for that too. Give some shadows underneath. I'm using the Embrasion Reel from, from Ben Nye. These are the same colors that are on your palette I gave you, but it's easier for me to hold this little one. I'm actually gonna charge up some of this dark red, the dried blood, and I'm gonna go in and under really quick, get some of those edges. Also going right through the my gash. I think I want it to feel a little more irritated. I'm gonna use some of that brighter red. Come back through the middle. And if you ever paint this and you're like, oh, I didn't do it right, you can take all that makeup off with your cold cream or soap and water and repaint it. You can also, if you ever want to try to use alcohol-based makeups, if you're doing this for somebody else, you can prep this with the cream makeup, do all your painting and powder it down before you put it on. I'm gonna take a little bit of this Misty Violet. I love it. Choose a little edge, get in there and work back and forth. So it's pretty great. Some of my edges are a little big. You know, maybe if I were to do this again, you could cut around it. So you can reuse this, right? So we can repaint it. If you decide, oh, I really don't like this edge and what it's looking like, you can cut it away. If you decide you want less area around here, you can cut that away. As soon as you start to set back, you can see what's gonna come up and around, right? We're still seeing those edges. Switch my brushes. I'm gonna create a little bit of redness around there so it looks like it's swelling up. So in order to do that, I'm grabbing some of my foundation color with a little bit of that blood red, using the lid to mix it. So it feels a little bit like our foundation color, but it also feels a little irritated. And then I can go right in here, making an irritated edge. So I'm laying that red right around here. You can try to hide it. So if you have a nice thin edge, you can blend that straight into your skin. But if you have an edge that wants to pick up, you can also feature it, right? I think I'm going to make this feel um, like it's coming forward. And this side really starts to go away, right? As soon as you start looking at it further and further away, this edge just kind of fades off. This edge we can make look really nasty. But see this edge is pretty smooth, and so I can transition that. And then where it comes up more, you can use that. Remember, it's all about lights and shadows, so you can make sure you're getting underneath these ridges that are coming up. Make them a little darker, that's gonna make them feel like those really recede, and you can make the tops of your wound. Use your highlight and just dust the tops of that. Dust the tops of that with your highlight, because that's gonna make it feel like it's coming forward. And if you have any of those little bits and bobs of latex that you rolled and put in there, you can also just get your brush nice and flat and you're just brushing it across the top. And then on the back side of it, taking my Misty Violet and or your dark red, and I'm gonna go and lay those in as my low lights. I'm gonna do the ends of my cuts. Get 
edges of your prosthetic piece, if you have a lip to it, make sure you're coating that with a color because you could do all the beautiful makeup application you want to this and to your arm. But then if you turn to the side and it suddenly looks like it's white or yellow, you're using the bed and eye, which is that weird like pinky peach color, just hit, take your makeup brush and hit those edges. And when in doubt, go slightly darker so they recede and go away. And if you don't want to use cream makeup, you can use acrylic paint because you can establish a look, use the acrylic paint, let that paint dry, and it's going to stay that way. It's pretty permanent. What are we going to do now? Add our blood? No, we're going to powder. I'm going to cover up all my makeup really quick. Get my lids on, cleaning up space, getting some powder out, charging that powder into my brush off some of that excess into my wood and I'm gonna powder and I'm patting right you don't want to smear it because you don't want to move everything around I'm just patting it and anywhere you put that makeup on your arm I'll make sure you pat it I'm taking my brush to get any of that excess off mm. for that last and final step you're gonna take some blood if you want the blood and put it in there you can also if this had bruising around it you can make some bruises on your arms you can do some superficial scratches oh, those might be fun. throw some scratches on in a hot second Use a little bit of everything we want. Do you want to try it out? Oh, I think that's a little better. So I'm going to go back and play with it. Now that it's powdered, I can see what I like, what I don't like using the edge. If you like some other scratches, I'm using a mix of both the blood red and the other one going with the length to kind of fuzz out the edges of those. I'm gonna powder those down really quick. Gives me a little more interest. You can use your stipple to get some broken blood vessels, all that good stuff. You can play, so go to your blood. I'm gonna use my Krylon blood for this. If you're doing something on your face, think about where it's gonna go. So if it is close to your mouth, you want something that's edible. So go ahead and use that blood without the soap. Again, when you go to put your blood into your wound, think about how runny you want it. If you want it to be less runny, add some Vaseline. I'm using the back of my pencil. And I'm gonna drip it into my wound and I'm letting gravity do that work. Can you see it as it's slowly running down. So I'm letting gravity do my work because you want it through the middle of that gash. And I'm running it down first because as soon as we start waving our arms, it's gonna wanna go up. But if I get stabbed, or I have a gaping wound. We want it to be true to where gravity is going to take that blood. And I'm going to go back the other way and decide, or maybe I want some of that blood to run. And remember, this is going to run for a while. If you have it where you want it and you don't want it to run anymore, grab a paper towel or a piece of toilet paper or tissue and control it. You can mop out any of that extra. I want a little bit on my arm, so I'm waiting for it to go down my arm. It's about to drip. Don't just keep adding more, because if you add more, it's just going to run everywhere and it's going to keep running after the fact. Be a little patient and let gravity do its work. Pretty great. I'm pretty happy with where it is. So I'm taking a little piece of tissue and letting it feed out. Oh, see, that feels really red. And that darker red we have behind there is really gonna help it feel a little deeper in there. Capping my blood. The other great thing is you can do a couple of them at a time. So you can make one at a time or you can lay out six or a dozen at a time and be done. And you do them like an assembly line. It's great fun. It's great for Halloween and other tricks. Go try them, have fun with it, and let me see what you come up with.